This video is brought to you by Learn Flutter Code, the learning platform that cares. So let's get started. When we are doing animations like a wave animation that is interactive, we might overlook one thing. Well, this is an app that I have built, which is called PS Love Period Tracker app. And there was something of concern. This is an actual Flutter app. But the performance of the app is something of concern. To see the performance of your app, you probably will use this performance overlay to visualize possible junk in your app. I will highly recommend. In the Flutter documentation, there is a best practice for optimizing your app. And the first thing is the build cost. Not the money to build your app, but the build cost of rendering. So let's zoom in in the first statement. It says, avoid repetitive and costly work in build methods. So what is this build method? So let me give you an example. We have a simple counter app that has a red box that wraps the counter number. Our values goes from zero to one. And this will run the build method. And what we expect theoretically is to have the number to rebuild only. However, in reality, almost all of the widgets in this screen get rebuilt. By using set state, this will rebuild the text, red box widget, the number, and even the button widget. Wow, that's pretty expensive for a simple app. So how do we prevent any unnecessary and expensive rebuild? Well, the answer is the consumer widget. The consumer widget provides specific rebuilds that improves performance. Hey there, Bob the Builder. He is waving to say that we are going to see how it is going to be implemented. I have a simple counter app as we have seen earlier. In it, I have implemented a change notifier provider. If you don't know what that is, I have made a video about it. Then I've made a change notifier called counter notifier. So let's see what it does. The counter notifier is pretty simple. I have an initial value as zero and a getter method that returns the current value. Then we have an increment method that increase the count and notify all listeners that are listening. So let's go back to see what our widget has. Inside our home page, we have a print statement over here, which prints out whenever the home page widget, or you could say the body widget, is being rebuilt or being built. Then we have a provider that gets the current value of the current counter from our counter notifier. If we were to scroll down, we have a red box widget with a counter number as a child widget. Then we pass in the count variable that we have reference from the provider inside the number params. So let's see what these two widgets are. In the boxing ring, oh sorry, in the red box widget, it is a simple container that is red in color by default. And it has also a print statement that says red box building. And in our counter number widget, it is a very simple text widget that takes in the current number as our counter. And it also has a print statement over here. So if you were to look in our debug console, you can see that there is the home page building, red box building, and our counter number building. Now, what do you think will happen if I were to press this button? So let me just put our debug console over here and let's clear our console and let's see what happens. You could see that we have incremented our value from zero to one and all of our widgets that we have our print statement in has been rebuilt. So our homepage has been rebuilt. At the same time, our red box and counter number has been rebuilt. This is pretty expensive for a simple app just to count numbers. So we are going to use consumer to make it less expensive. As a consumer will return the count value from the, our counter provider, which widget needs it? 
the red box widget or the counter number widget. If you say the counter number widget, you are right. So the first thing is that you can wrap this with a widget and type in the word consumer. And then once you have typed in the consumer, you could see that the builder is required. So you can type in builder and then you can open up the suggestions by having control space or it will automatically open the shortcut menu. As you can see here, there is two suggestions that we can use. Let's use the second one. This is pretty cool because it returns the context value and the child variables that we can use. Now we are going to make this counter number inside our builder function. So you can just copy and paste it over here, remove the comma and put a semicolon and then type in the word return. Now let's go through the different variables that has been passed inside our builder function. So the first one is context, which is very, very simple. It returns us a build context. Now the second one value, it is dynamic. So we actually can put the type of consumer that we are listening to. And lastly, we have the child, which returns us a widget. Hmm, this is a little bit uh, interesting. So I'm going to explain to you on how to use this child, but for now we are going to use the value over here. So we can just put this underscore to signify that this is just a placeholder. Same goes with the child variable. Now the consumer is going to listen to our counter notifier. So we can just copy this over here and then paste it on our consumer. Now, if we were to hover over our value, you could see that it returns us a counter notifier. And now with that said, we can just put in value.count because we have a count getter method. Now we can just remove the child widget from our red box because the builder method will return us our child widget as well. Now we can remove this final count statement and just delete it from site. And let's save this and refresh this whole app. So inside our debug console, we have nothing. And then if we were to just press on this button, what do you think will print out? Will it print out the three statements that says home page building, red box building, and the text building? Let's see. Oh, so it only prints out counter number building. It works. So that means our home page does not get rebuilt and our red box did not get rebuilt. Then our counter number is only getting rebuilt, which is way less expensive than everything getting rebuilt. That's amazing. Now I have a challenge. What if we want to change the red box into another color? So to change our color by pressing this button, what we can do is we can create another notifier. Let's call it color notifier. Let's see what this color notifier does. So this color notifier looks very similar to what we have previously created. So we have a variable called is red that has true as its default value. Then we have a getter method. Then we have a switch color method that basically switches the Boolean value from true to false. And then we will notify the listeners. Then at the same time, our on pressed function has the switch color function. And now in this example, where should I wrap the consumer? Should I wrap it around the red box widget? Or should I wrap it around the counter number widget? If you were to say the red box widget, well, you are right. So let's see how we are going to do that. So let's wrap our red box widget with the consumer. And then we will have to get the builder method as per usual or per usual. And then let's use what it has suggested for us. Now we are going to make use of this thing called child. So this child widget will actually help us in this example. So instead of returning our counter number widget, let's return our red box widget. So type in red box and inside our red box, if you were to look inside it. So in order for our red box to change in color, first we need to get the params is red created, obviously. So if it's null, we will put it as true. 
and our default value if it's true then we will just give a simple red color if it's not true then our colors will be blue so inside our red box we will need our is read parameters and then the value that we are listening to is it counter notifier or color notifier so if you have seen so far inside our on press it is our color notifier let's copy our color notifier with the pointy brackets and then paste it as the type for our consumer then we can type in value dot is read our red box also has a child parameter so we can type in child and we are going to use this child widget variable that it has provided us so this child variable represents the child params that a consumer has let's put in the word child and then if we were to remove this red box widget and now let's just put in the missing semicolon you could see that this child will actually represent the counter number that we have over here let's see our debug console and you could see that we have our three widgets that has been built for us if we were to clear the console let's see what has been rebuilt if we were to change our color for our red box you could see that our red box currently is just being rebuilt this is due to the wonderful consumer functionality to be very specific in its rebuild now we know that the consumer improves performance it also provides the value from a provider when the build context is absent an example is in a widget you have maybe a change notifier provider that takes in the counter notifier however you really need the value in a text widget so you put in an a child widget however this will be an error as the context or the provider is actually referenced incorrectly it is referring from the build context of the current widget however in our current context we don't have the counter notifier that we are passing so the correct way is to use a consumer and the consumer will help us get the context or provider that we need wow consumer is really helpful so in summary a consumer is able to provide specific rebuilds that improves and enhance performance and provide value from a provider when the context is absent if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want more of these provider videos subscribe down below and comment down which provider widget i should go through next stay safe and all the best bye bye